Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. What a perfect moment to speak to Mr. Eisman. The new Berman uh, acclaimed in a movie of a few years ago, look for the new Eisman Hollywood property. I think it's a Memorial Day, Paul. You know, Memorial Day is a good opening. Sure, you know, that's what it I hear. It's very good. Look for Bear Squeeze. You're going to see that uh, Memorial Day 2025. Steve, is this just one big short cover? We got the wall of money out there. Lawrence McDonald has been brilliant <coughs> on this. With the action yesterday, is it an indirect short cover going on? That's too sophisticated for me. I mean, I, I, I find the whole... Um, incredible amount of energy that people spend on the fed day more amusing than than informative you know think about it for a second how, how much ink was spilt about whether the fed would lower 25 or 50 all right so they lowered 50 and then what happened the, the market had no reaction mm -hmm. just went up and down nobody knew what to do um and today the market's up huge but rates are higher so, <laughs> you know, you put it all together, I, I, I try not to spend too much time trying to figure it out. All, all I care about is the general direction of the Fed is lower. How much lower? I don't particularly care. I don't think that's particularly important. The more important question is how's the economy? Economy is slowed, but the data seems to indicate that the economy is fine, and, and that's all that really matters. So what, other than the, or I guess in the context of the economy, what are the drivers for kind of whether you're bullish or bearish? What are some of the big variables that you focus on? So I, I've gotten thematic, okay. more thematic in the last uh, bunch of years, and, and I think that there are two great um, equity themes of our time, and I, I tr we, tr we try and focus our portfolios as much as reasonable on those themes, and those are AI slash tech and um, infrastructure. And um, I think those themes will last for years. There'll be variations. You know, on the infrastructure side, there, are, you know, politics do matter, but the overall theme will continue. Paul, let me interrupt with the data check here as the market surge. Dow up 566 points. On a percentage basis, the market lifts here at 933, greater than futures. NASDAQ up 2.3%. As Paul predicted, the VIX comes in 16.40. On the AI trade, Steve, how do you suggest people play it? I think the first name people kind of jumped on was NVIDIA for good reason, because they mm -hmm. put up that, that big revenue print a couple of years ago. How else are you trying to play this? So, I, I mean, my, w w the way we play it is the way most people are playing it. NVIDIA, some other chip companies, uh, the, the very large companies with massive databases. Um, you know, then the question becomes, you know, what apps and who's going to create them are going to work. And I think that is so early right now yeah. that, that it's really not worth talking about. You know, just as an example, um, the part of the business of Accenture that is doing extremely well is not the consulting side, which would, would do well when companies are spending a lot of money on AI, it's, it's the uh, outsourcing side. And the reason why the outsourcing side is, is, is doing well is that most S&P companies do not have their data sufficiently in one place structured appropriately to really even do anything with respect to AI. So it's very, very early in the AI story. Um, the one um, longer term theme that, that we've been thinking about, although it's so long term, I, I, I don't know quite what to do with it yet, is that I think there's a good argument to be made that um, we have seen hardware re-rate up and software somewhat de-rate. And I think it's possible that AI could cause that to continue because it's possible that the cost of creating software because of AI is going to plummet. And if that's the case, some of the iconic um, software companies out there may not have moats around their businesses that are quite as high mm -hmm. as they used to be. Within the skill set that you've earned and at Newberger Berman, do you people believe the CapEx expenditure of technology is being done intelligently and efficiently, or is there wasted money being squandered away on AI? I mean, I'm sure both. It's you know we won't know we won't know the answer to that question for years. So I don't think it's worth trying to figure that out at this point. So how else do you think? I mean, it's are you? A lot of folks are concerned about this MAG-7, this concentration risk, just as a market concern. Do you have a market structure concern that so much of this market is weighted towards these MAG-7, or is that beyond kind of... Well, I, I think one interesting uh, aspect of that 
and I'll come to that, is that a, a many um, <coughs> active managers, probably more on the institutional side, um, underperform because their risk parameters don't allow them yep. to overweight the MAG-7 because the MAG-7 right. is so big. Um, and it's probably going to continue. I, I don't think we will really see a broadening out until we see um, right. apps come out so that some of the middle, right. more middle companies Small can do that. Yeah. But that's, we're a ways away from that. Do you have a favorite MAG-7? Is there one where you've I don't want to talk about individual stocks. I'm just not going to do that. All right. I get into my firm gets me into trouble. <laughs> the firm gets you into trouble. You don't get yourself into trouble. No. Okay, I got it. On the infrastructure. Nobody's listening. <laughs> on the infrastructure theme. Yes. Do I go out there and just buy like Cummins en engines and? Well, like let, 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 let me talk about that because politics are important. Okay. Um, so I think that there are four mega infrastructure themes, and then there's a fifth. Uh, the four are um, onshoring. The second is, you know, improvement of the of the grid. Yep. The third is everything having to do with bu actually building the data centers, and and that there's overlap there with the grid, and then there's a, then there's greenification, and then there's all the bills that Biden passed to to shove money into all four boxes. You know where the politics can become important is. You know, I'll do two extreme cases. If if, if Trump sweeps, mm -hmm. greenification is going to get de-emphasized, mm -hmm. and if um, Harris sweeps, you know, greenification will get re-emphasized. So that that's important. So the politics here are important. Steve Eisman with us, and we will continue here. Let me do a data check here with markets on the move. SPX Dow at records, Dow up 540 points to the solid 42,000 print on the Dow. 5,700 SPX up 86 points. NASDAQ 100 up 2.2% with Steve Eisen. Steve, how, do you, how concerned are you, if at all? We're not on right now. What's are we that? on? We're on, baby. We're on. We're on. Oh, it's for radio. It's hard to tell. Uh, yeah, the, the red light. <laughs> we make it easy. The red light. When the red oh, light red is light. Right, yes, that's, right. that's, that's for me. I just know, learned the, something. Exactly. Um, all right, valuation. How concerned are you, if at all, about this market broadly? Uh, you know, I think I learned this lesson um, in the dot-com bust. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when dot-com was rocking and rolling, everybody was yelling and screaming about valuation. But that didn't matter until there was a recession, and it turned out that a lot of these companies had actually fundamental problems. So I don't spend... I mean, generally speaking, I'm not going to invest in a company that sells at 1,000 PE. That's mm -hmm. just not what I do. But we'll invest in some high PE stocks. Um, I just don't feel like it, it's, as long as the economy is fine, it's, not, it's, it's, it's more of an academic ec exercise than anything else. So the economy, I mean, from what we're hearing from you, the economy really is underpinning almost everything you you're the foundation, I guess, of how, how you view investments. Correct. Okay. How about on the fixed income side? What do we do there? I mean, I can sit in a two-year treasury. I used to get 5%. I'm still getting 3.6%. That's not bad for, you know, like no risk. Where do I go out there and take some credit risk, do you think? Look, I, we do some corporate bond investing, but um, mostly what we do is equities. Okay. Uh, I'm... Um, I don't have a strong view on fixed income right now, one okay. way or the other. I really don't. Do you have alternatives in your portfolio? I don't have alternatives either. So you're I'm, I'm just a stock jockey. Stock jockey. A stock like the old jockey. Stock and I always jockey. have been. Okay, look, we got to talk banks here and financial with Steve Eisman. Here's a quote. So, yeah, I met with this retail banker yesterday, and I'm supposed to be getting him to invest in our fund, but instead I start grilling him about our overdraft penalties, and now his bank lets a customer write 10, 12 checks before they tell him they're overdrawn, and this creep is making billions off of screwing over people <laughs> this way. Script that of sounds a like a much younger version of me. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's from the script of a, a very movie. angry young man. <laughs> a very angry young man from 2015. Can you buy... New York big bank, can you buy the future of Bank of America? You know, not individual stocks, but can you buy the big bank success of the future? So let's talk about what the positives are. The positives are that the regulators did a very, very good job um, post Dodd-Frank, led by um, Vice Chair Daniel Tarullo, um, truly one of the unsung heroes of the financial system. Um, the leverage in the banks is by, by, cut by more than half. Even within that leverage, they have been de-risked. 
Um, so the financial system of the United States, as far as I'm concerned, is very, very safe, and I don't lose any sleep about it. And by the way, I sleep very well. <laughs> um, right. But uh, do I think there's a great story to invest in some of the very large banks? Right. Not really. I, I just don't think yeah. there's a, a story there one way or the other. Too important. i got to get this in. Lex in the FT today blistering about private equity and the ability not to cash out. Do you see potential problems within the illiquidity of private equity? You know, you could spin any bad tale you want. I don't, I, there's just not enough data on what's in private equity fair, to, to, to really know one way or the other. You can't make that guess. I can't make that judgment. See that? You know, he's just, he's, you know, his lawyers love him. It's not, his first, go it's not his first go It's not his first You know, what do individuals Oh, my lawyers what love me. Opinion? You know, one, one, one time, in this quick story, in the 90s, Oppenheimer got, I was at Oppenheimer, and yeah. Oppenheimer got sued over something that I had written, and and the, the there was, you know, it was discovery, and the lawyers called me and said, send us everything you have on, on this mm -hmm. company that you wrote about, and uh, I sent it to them, which was only the reports mm -hmm. that I had written. And the lawyer called me and said, what about your notes? And I said, I don't have notes. I don't take notes. He goes, I love you. <laughs> Steve Eisman, thank you so much. We love you, too. I uh, greatly appreciate it. Mr. Eisman is with Newberger Berman. Some perspective there.